Got it. The total mass of these quarks, however, accounts for only 1% of the proton matter mass. The purpose of the experiments was to discover the Higgs boson, a particle, presumed providing the proton with the missing 99% of its mass. <coughs> Where is the remaining mass of the proton coming from? According to the model, developed in 1960s by several physicists, including Peter Higgs and Francis Andler, the proton gains its remaining mass by interacting with the Higgs field that permeates all space. The mass is transferred from the Higgs field to the proton by a Higgs boson in the process controlled by the Higgs mechanism. During the experiments, the protons travel in opposite directions inside the accelerator at speeds approaching the speed of light before they are made to collide at two particle detectors, the Atlas detector and the CMS detector. Because the lifetime of the new particle is too short to be detected, its mass was determined based on measured parameters of its decay particles, photons, and leptons. The average masses of the new particle measured by the CMS and Atlas groups were respectively 125.3 and 126.0 giga electric volts, or 123.5 and 134.3 times greater then the proton rest mass. How close were the predicted and measured masses of the new particle? According to the data published by the particle data group in 2006, various theories predicted that the lower mass limit of the Higgs boson shall be from 84.5 to 121.9 times greater than the proton rest mass. Mass. But these theories did not predict the mass upper limit. The 3D SST predicted in 2006 a single value for the relative mass of the new particle that was 136.9 times greater than the calculated proton rest mass. This value turned out to be within 2.5% of the measured relative masses of the new particle. Both groups concluded that the results of their experiments were consistent with the expectations for the standard model Higgs boson, but with some reservations regarding to the nature of the new particle. According to the Atlas group, more data are needed to assess the nature of the new particle in detail. According to the CLS group, the collection of further data will enable a more rigorous test of this conclusion and an investigation whether the properties of the new particle imply physics beyond the standard model. The 3D SST 
goes beyond the standard model. According to this theory, at the core of the universe are the toroidal spiral space times called toruses. Based on the same three space time postulates, the toruses are applicable to both micro and macro worlds. In the micro world, they are responsible for the creation of all elementary matter and radiation particles. In the macro world, they are responsible for the creation of gravity and black holes. <coughs> the 3D SST is described in the books Prime Elements of Ordinary Matter, Dark Matter, and Dark Energy, published in 2006 and 2007. The latest version of the 3D SST called the Universal Space Time Theory, UST, is described in the book The Space Time Origin of the Universe, published in 2013. Below is a brief description of this theory. Torix contains three components double circular leading string propagating along its circular path with the radius R1, double toroidal trailing string with the radius R2, wound around and propagating synchronously with the leading string, and spherical embrace <coughs> with the radius R embracing the trailing string. Unlike dimensionless quarks and elementary particles of the standard model, the torix is visualizable to the right is a mechanical model of the toric trailing string sitting on a flat mirror reflecting both the toric model and the blue sky. All toric spacetime parameters are derived based on three toric spacetime postulates. First, the length of leading string L1 and one winding of trailing string L2 are equal to one in number. Second, the torix i radius R0 is constant. And third, the spiral velocity of trailing string V2 is equal to the speed of light in vacuum C. We will show below that these three simple postulates yield amazing properties of torix. Okay. Torix space time postulates yield the unified law of planetary motion. This law establishes a relationship between the relative velocity beta 1 and the relative radius b1 of the toric's leading string. Notably, for a particular case when b1 is much greater than 1, this law reduces to the well-known law of planetary motion based on classical mechanics. Transformation of torises. As the relative radius of leading string V1 decreases from positive to negative infinity, the stiffness angle of training string phi2 increases from 0 to 360 degrees, producing four kinds of topologically inverted polarized torises, real negative, real positive, imaginary positive and imaginary negative. Real negative torises are located in the top right quadrant. Trailing strings for these torises are wound outside of the toric side. In these torises, all mean space-time parameters are expressed with real numbers. Real positive torises are located in the top left quadrant. Trailing strings of these torises are inverted and wound inside of the toric side. In these torises, all mean space-time parameters are expressed with real numbers. Imaginary positive torises are located in the bottom left quadrant. Trailing strings of these torises are inverted and wound inside of the toric side while their windings overlap. In these torises, some mean space-time parameters are expressed with 
imaginary numbers. Imaginary negative torises are located in the bottom right quadrant. Training strings of these torises are outverted and encircling the torix eye. In these torises, some space-time parameters are expressed with imaginary numbers. Harmonic torises are located approximately in the middle of each quadrant. In these torises, the frequencies of their training strings relate to one another by simple harmonic ratios. Excited torises change their dimensions as a function of the torus quantization parameter z, that is a function of the exponential and linear excitation quantum energy states m and n respectively. During excitation of torises, their i radii R0 remain constant. Oscillated torises decrease all their dimensions by the torix oscillation factor q sub q. That is a function of the torix oscillation quantum state q. Excited torises are located near border lines between quadrants. Invergence of the torix components occur at all components 0, 360 degrees, training string 90 degrees, spherical membrane 180 degrees, and linear string 270 degrees. Physical properties of torises are closely related to their space time properties. Torix charge ET is proportional to the ratio of the radii of the torix training string R2 and leading string R1 with opposite sign, where E is the elementary charge. <coughs> torix gravitational mass Mg is proportional to the absolute ratio of the radii of the torix trailing string R2 and leading string R1, where Me is the electron rest mass. Elementary matter particles, trons, are formed by the unification of excited polarized torises. This produces four kinds of trons, <coughs> electrons, positrons, ethertrons, and singulatrons. <coughs> torises exist at different matter levels, defining their excitation, quantum energy states, and for the matter level 1 harmonic matter, m is equal to 0 for ethertrons and singulatrons, and m is equal to 1 for electrons and positrons. For the matter level 2 ordinary matter, the respective values of m are 1 and 2, and for the matter level 3 dark matter, the respective values of m are 2 and 3, and so on. Atomic electrons of ordinary matter is made up of one real and one imaginary negative linearly excited torises. When the linear excitation quantum energy state n of these torises increases from 1 to 2, the relative radii of their leading strings enlarge four times. When the exponential excitation quantum energy state m of these torises increases from 2 to 3, this radii enlarge about 137 times. At the same time, the electron mass and charge remain unchanged. Nuclear positron of ordinary matter is made up of one real and one imaginary positron, linearly excited torsos. When the linear excitation quantum energy state n of the stories increases from 1 to 2, the relative radii of their leading strings get closer to 0.5. The same occurs when the exponential excitation quantum energy state M of the stories increases from 2 to 3. At the same time, the positron mass and charge remain unchanged. 
If your trons of ordinary matter are made up of one negative and one positive real linearly excited process. When the linear excitation quantum energy state n of these torises increases from 1 to 2, the relative radii of their leading strings get closer to 1. The same occurs when the exponential excitation quantum energy state m of these torises increases from 2 to 3. At the same time, the ethertron mass decreases <coughs> about 137 times. Singulatrons of ordinary matter are made up of one negative and one positive imaginary linearly excited torises. When the linear excitation quantum energy state n of these torises increases from 1 to 2, the relative radii of their leading strings get closer to zero. The same occurs when the exponential excitation quantum energy state n of these torises increases from 2 to 3. At the same time, the synchrotron mass increases about 137 times. Harmonic ethertrons are made up of one negative and one positive real harmonic torsos. Since the exponential excitation quantum energy state of this torsos m is equal to zero, their spacetime and physical parameters do not change with any changes of their linear excitation quantum energy states. Thus, the parameters of the non-oscillated harmonic ethertrons are the same for all matter levels. Harmonic singulatrons are made up of one negative and one positive imaginary harmonic torsos. Similarly to the harmonic ethertrons, the parameters of the non oscillated harmonic singulatrons are the same for all matter levels. Proton is a complex particle made up of a nuclear core and a nuclear positron. The nuclear core is made up of harmonic trons and excited singulatrons and ethertrons, located at the center one and the vertices two through seven of an octet crystal structure. The nuclear positron is located at its center one. Calculated proton mass is approximately 4.6% greater than the measured proton rest mass, allowing for the energy to form the crystal structure. According to the 3D SST and UST, the micro world is a conglomerate of entities made up of polarized torsos. It follows the unified law of stable polarization according to which the sum of polarization parameters of all components of a stable system is infinitely small. During various phases of the existence of the universe, either the entire microwave or some of its parts appear in the following forms, quantum vacuum, harmonic field, elementary particles, nucleons, and atoms. The quantum vacuum is an extreme quantum energy state of the micro world. It is made up of a single tron surrounded by infinite numbers of ethertrons. Since the masses of the ethertrons in the extreme quantum energy states are infinitely small, the quantum vacuum appears as nothingness. Hadesses are the prime elements of elementary radiation particles. They are formed when excited torises become de-excited. Helix structure has two levels. The first level is in the form of a single double helical spiral with each branch propagating along the helical spiral path. The second level includes two double helical spirals, with each spiral wound around <coughs> one of the branches of the helix first level and propagating synchronously with them. All helix spacetime parameters are derived 
based on three helix space-time postulates. First, the wavelength of trailing string lambda 2 is equal to the length L1 of one winding of leading string. Second, the helix I radius R0 is constant. And third, the spiral velocity of training string B2 is equal to the speed of light in vacuum C. Similarly to the torics, the above three helix space-time postulates yield amazing properties of helices. Elementary radiation particles, tones, are formed by the unification of polarized helices. Electrons, positrons, and intertones of all matter levels propagate at the speed of light. As the matter level increases, their frequencies decrease. Singulatons of harmonic matter also propagate at the speed of light, while the singulatons of ordinary and dark matter propagate at the superluminal speed. As the matter level increases, their frequencies increase. Conclusions based on the 3D SST and its latest version, the UST. First, the proton is a complex particle made up of elementary particles residing inside of an octahedral crystal structure. Second, during proton proton collisions, the matter level of the excited proton increases from 2 of ordinary matter to 3 of dark matter, increasing its mass about 136.9 times. Third, the excited proton captures an electron and then resembles the new neutral particle discovered during the proton proton collisions experiments at SOC. And fourth, the experiments conducted at the Large Hadron Collider in 2012 have possibly provided for the first time evidence of the existence of dark matter. The Hidigol Press welcomes all arguments related to the proposed explanation of the nature of new particle. Thank you.
quantities of uh, macroscopic method which we knew. That means if uh, that is in fact the, the most most hard things of of the, of the models to connect it into our new and measured world. That means connect the model with the uh, amount or force of gravity field uh, around the particle which we knew or connected in some way to the strength of Coulomb, Coulomb force, Coulomb charge, uh, mathematically and numerically, numerically connected uh, and connect this model to, to the energy or the density of, uh, of the ether in, in, in some uh, the volume of, uh, of, of space of universe and I, I think that the, all, in all this model this has to be done. If it will be done then it will be, they are, then they will be more realistic or more accepted and they explain also the also the <coughs> known known quantity which we knew. Uh, momentum energy uh, density of energy or momentum universe uh, amount of charge of particles, amount of charge of proton, uh, electron and something. Have you read his book? The Pittsburgh book? Um, if, it, if it is the connecting uh, Yeah, have you read his book? Yes. No, no. no, no. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think he actually spends a lot of time on the constant. In fact, I think that's one of the, if I remember right, uh, numbers of these people uh, who have Pretty detailed models work and do predictions of the constants, yes. and and so there's a lot. There's a how do you say they work? Uh, Ginsburg's work pretty much. You know, I think of, I'm not sure who collaborated with him, but he works very much amongst his own his own uh, his own models for such a long time that he's. I think he is constantly checking with the numbers so that. In fact, I think in the beginning of this, he was talking about how he was predicting uh, some outcomes from the Higgs particle. I also think uh, uh, he also seems to, in my opinion, want to he use a lot of terminology from mainstream, you know, the space-time. He's talking about uh, a lot of things where uh, I think a lot of the terminology, oftentimes, I know dissidents want to try to be obviously they want to be accepted their models, but I think a lot of times too, they're, the names of the things that they choose, in this case, I think he's using a lot of mainstream terminology. And I think a lot of times that's an attempt to reach out to the mainstream and take a look at what uh, these people are doing. Uh, people who have these pretty compl complicated models. So, any more comments? Go ahead. Uh, did I see in one of the papers why you said these accelerated particle accelerators are useless? Did me? Did I say that or was that a paper on that? Uh, no, no. Um, I did. I uh, I did do a paper talking about how I I think the concept of particle accelerators, basically smashing pieces and looking at the trails, um, is. Uh, a, fairly useless endeavor. That, I, I may have had written a paper in general about that. But that was a, a while back, I think. It appears that the Large Hadron Collider so it's a big embarrassment. Having spent billions of euros, there been no significance. Well, to give you an example, and this is maybe interest of uh, Dr. Bartlett, is, um, when I saw 60 Minutes, you, are you aware, you know what the 60 Minutes program here in the United States is? Some current class program. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and it, it's, it does pretty good journalism. In fact, I was really surprised in 2009, they did one on, on cold fusion and put the physicists against the wall. If you can go to <coughs> cold fusion is hot again, 2009 to 60 Minutes, it's on my website, Einstein Wrong, and they literally Put, put them in an in extremely embarrassing situation, the physicists, right? But when they asked, I believe it was 60 minutes, and it wasn't a program on the Hadron Collider necessarily, uh, they may have made a statement, 
uh, or I just saw Stephen Croft ask a question. I don't know. It was something to that effect. He basically asked, what is the per what's this going to give mankind? And the answer was, well, we gave you the internet. That was his answer. Now there's two things with that. One is why is he saying that? That has nothing to do with going and finding subatomic particles or sub subatomic particles. You're, you're not even trying to pretend there's a reason there. Second, the internet wasn't invented by particle physicists. It was invented by um, engineers and, and computer scientists in, at Dartford to try to get information past long distances. So the need for it perhaps was by the physicists, but it wasn't invented by. And if you have, if you spent a billion, a couple billion dollars on this machine, and that's your best answer to probably the best, the most important, you know, news group out there, you have got real problems. And and I think that's one of the things I think even here in the United States they were looking to and are at times looking for uh, to build a bigger climate. They 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 uh, voted it down here in the United States. It's supposed to be in Texas. And then what happens? Uh, Europe builds one. They find what they call the God particle. And then we have what I call our phys physics evangelists going on TV say, oh, see, Europe, they, we've lost this discovery. No one ever asks, like, well, did they really find it? Are they inventing this? What use is it? And, and that becomes another question is whether or not. And that's one of the things I think the, the CNPS needs to put into maybe its mission statement. One of my tenets and many other people here is that scientific research should be moral. And it means not by meaning doing, you know, doing experiments on humans. It means we should be not spending great resources on things that do not produce anything except, you know, uh, how do you say, build giant machines that do nothing for mankind, or that if extraterrestrials were to come here and they were to say, see what we were doing, would laugh at us. Uh, you, you know, it, it becomes, it, it, it's big, it's much more than just physics. So, I think that's a, that is an issue. I mean, David, look into those David I, I have, I guess, a couple of observations on this. One is that uh, simply because one can construct an incredibly detailed and internally consistent mathematical model doesn't mean it means anything. Uh, there, there's a tendency to believe if you can state it in mathematics that it all fits together in some logical way, that it must have something real to say. That simply isn't true. Uh, math is just math. It may or may not be tied to reality. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, all the things we do is mathematics is a bigger sub, bigger set than physics is a subset of math. That is, we, we have to try to find math that's sort of cobbled together will describe physical processes. It's a useful language, but you can use it to say nonsense as well as sense. No, oh, absolutely. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, another point is that, that as to colliders, we were having a discussion on this a little earlier. And that is, it seems if you're using um, electromagnetics as the means to impart velocity to something, uh, we passed the point a long time ago where we can make things move uh, darn near as fast as the speed of light. Now the question we're sort of uh, addressing is uh, not do we want to make uh, small particles go almost at the speed of light, but do we want to make desks go almost at the speed of light? How about making trucks go almost at the speed of light? What are we actually going to learn by trying to make bigger and bigger things uh, go almost at the speed of light. And even if, as we were discussing, even if you send them off in two directions at the speed of light and can reasonably say you got a collision at twice the speed of light, how are you going to get it at three times the speed of light? Have them uh, put out another, <laughs> launch something else at the speed of light while they're going around at the speed of light. I mean, this is becoming to be, uh, as a matter of simple logic, a little ridiculous. We need to start finding new ways rather than bigger and bigger colliders uh, at enormous expenses to, to just do in, in, a, in a few more decimal places what we've already been able to do for some time. Well, I think one of the things is, is we uh, are trying to, at least in this like all third decade with the CNPS, I'm trying to write articles on it. I'm trying to get other people to write articles. When something comes out, 
we're not putting our voice out there of what these things are. There's no place to see the opposition of when they're talking about, you know, 17 dimensions. That, hey, it's, dimen it's stupid, there are three dimensions. Or who is sitting around talking about what I think I get upset about is, who says that smashing things, there's some rules implicit that means we have to build bigger pliers because as we go down layers, who says there are layers, and as we do that, to get to the next piece, we have to put more energy in it and we'll find it. And while you look at the Higgs part, if you look at what they're doing, and you actually look at, I mean, give an example, the neutrino. You go to the neutrino place on Wikipedia, it says, oh, this is a muon that, that used to be a neutrino. I mean, how, how much can we take if we don't write about this nonsense? No one's writing against it. I mean, the idea that building colliders and smashing things has a bunch of implications. We have this implication that if we build a bigger one, we'll find the next layer down. Who but, said yeah, that? But, but the layers we found mean anything. Well, are, do, are we finding layers? I give people the analogy, I talk many times about this. Take a cannon, put a sheet up, and have the average person says, I'm gonna sh I want you to shoot this cannonball at this car, and I'm going to, by just telling you where the paths are, you tell me what you've hit. That's what a particle accelerator is. And when you say, is that, you think that's a good method to find out what that car is all about? And they're going to go, no. I said, but that's what we're doing. And we have all these implicit rules. They said, well, to see the smaller particles, there's more energy. Energy is a concept that's not real. We have to smash it harder. We're making up rules. We then follow those and then make bigger machines. On, no one's questioning whether the rules themselves are even valid. You know, so, I mean, the, the first thing is for at least for us to start writing these things. If we put a voice out there, people will see there's opposition. Oh, are there <coughs> other ideas? Yeah, come to this group. Listen to some ideas. You know, but right now there is no opposition. There is nobody writing this. Well, I'm worried about my opinion is also that, uh, in fact, the enormous large for the amount of energies are put uh, to find something which were sometimes in four milliards uh, years ago, and uh, but uh, our needs is at first to what is uh, today now here, and uh, not uh, to confirm the theories which are talking in us, which was the four hundred milliards years ago, or put the same amount of money, okay, for the searching what was in the past, but there, are, uh, there is no money for searching the exact real uh, enter, uh, what is consistent of, and uh, if there is particle or some another pieces, because uh, there is no political will to it. So the enter is hidden, and the enter is uh, damned, and uh, so it, that's the situation. And, and uh, on, on the other, uh, other, other side, uh, uh, we, uh, it, it's no doubt that we, if we will hire the energy, we will, uh, we will find more and more energetical, energetical particles uh, because I think that in fact we have just only one particle. If we uh, put up the protons and so, it is, it is in fact the same that we on a higher energy level, which so as also the case uh, at the proton and the end. We have muons, we have Accounts, we have so all leaves around uh, 10 to minus 23 seconds, and uh, without muon, which leaves, I don't know, 10, 10 minutes or so, and all other particles, so it's just a resonance, and uh, there is no reason why we can't find, in, in fact, in infinity, infinity row, the another high energy particles which we live, which we live. Also for the ten minutes twenty three seconds, so, <coughs> and so I think we must organize <coughs> exercise so as we uh, build telescope, as we build um, Hubble telescope, we are looking very far to the to the universe. So we must we must turn it, and we must look uh, very on a tiny, most tiny particles in the universe, and we can do it with hammer and. and Drum to, 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 to rabbits and fine. so it must be done. the most sensitive method to try to, to, to search for these particles of ether, so 
part, of, part, part of the problem, too, is politics. Um, I, I talk about this in the film. When, the, in the film, you go and visit the Potomac site at um, uh, White Sands or wherever that was, I can't remember. But uh, we had a, when you have governments who say, atomic power, when the atomic bomb exploded, we handed the keys of the kingdom over to the physicists. These physicists now have the control of ultimate control. What do we worry about today more than anything? Iran getting the bomb, so-and-so getting the bomb. It's, it's hugely important, and that can cause huge money. So what, what is, who gets afraid? The United States gets afraid that if we don't build the particle accelerator, and Europe does, and they find the Higgs particle, and that becomes all powerful because they don't know what's going on. What if we can't take the chance, we'll throw money at it, and we'll go after it. That's what's really happening politically. That's why there's money there. You think that the politicians are going, yeah, I'm really, you know, I, I, I've been curious myself about the, the Higgs particle. They, they, they have no idea. All they, they're talking about, that's what they're talking about behind closed doors. Do we need to build this so that if, let's say, um, Europe gets it and they have something we don't have, they all, they all of a sudden have power. They always have, some, have something that's very powerful. But I think eventually it's going to stop because nothing's coming out of it. The power isn't coming. There's nothing coming out of it. You know, the European people who spent all this money are going to say, what came out of this for us? Uh, it, yes, of course. It has to be looked on it uh, from the political view. In all, German, all European countries, uh, the basic ruling for other Christians uh, parties, and uh, they they put this money for this to to in fact uh, the creation politics will be confirmed. In America, it is only little. Another way, of course, not the main political forces are not uh, not uh, from uh, from the on the basis of uh, Christians and so also. Also, this has to be really, really considered. In, in Germany, the 415, there is just a Christian party, which is ruling the same as, mm -hmm. in fact, uh, in Czech, uh, in France, of course, uh, not so much in England, but also the England is not so connected, so mm -hmm. firmly to this project. That's, that's it. That's how the physics is going on. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of, when you get to the point where you have to explain why are these things happening. People are going to ask, why are they putting money into this? If you guys, if we stand here saying this is all a joke, they're going to why, why is this happening? We have to have explanations. When I talk to the average person, they do get it. They go, yeah, that makes sense. I said, do you understand it? And it, it another thing, why, do, why does it, I, I have a lot of regular people, talk, I talk with them and they, and, and I say, they say, well, Science is this way. Science is when you have a problem, the scientists in the universities, they look at that problem, they analyze that problem, and then they find out, well, maybe our theory's wrong, they change it. That's what they think. That's what you ask the average person. And when you tell them differently, they think you're some conspiratorialist person and, and whatever. They, and then when they really start to look at it, like my mom was just not... She reads articles now and laughs. She'll hand me an article and pick out the five stupid words really that are there that give away, you know, uh, something. And she goes, "This is a this is a joke. We can't. We got to teach. That's why I'm saying we need to start to teach the world about what we have. We have two decades of really great work, and we continue to have a lot of great work. But if we don't answer questions today, that's why when Pluto came out, I looked at it. There's